Okay, the first thing we want to do with Photoshop once we've opened it is decide on, on a particular size for the picture. So I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to click New. And I get this little window that opens and in here I want to choose a size for my picture. So I'm going to go for Web and under Web I'm going to choose the one that says 1024. That's the size I'm going to work with and I'm just going to say OK. That opens up this screen for me. Okay, at the moment it's only on 33%, so in, in reality it's much bigger than it looks. I could come down here and I could change the size and make it 50% so it looks a bit bigger on the screen and so on. But that's what I've got to work with. You'll see on the right hand side we've got something called layers. And in layers there's only one layer at the moment, which is this background layer. What I want to be able to do now is to work with some photographs that I've already got. Now, there's a few ways of getting photographs in. Probably the first one is just to do file and open and then we look at a photograph. So if I choose perhaps this picture of my daughter's on a horse and say open, it brings that in. But you can see here now I've got two tabs. It's brought the second photo in as a, as a different one, it's separate. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to drag the first picture onto the second picture. Um, the easiest way of doing that in the first place is to um, drag this whole tab downwards so that my picture's floating. Now what I've found is that this picture's much bigger than the one I want to drag it onto. So while this one's still highlighted, I'm going to go to Image and choose Image Size. And you can see this one is 3,008 pixels wide, whereas the one we're working on is only 1,024. So I'm going to make this a much smaller number first. So I'm going to drop it down to about 500 and then click OK. Now you can see that this picture looks like it's gone way smaller. It's still at the moment on a, a very small um, percentage of what we're looking at so it, that doesn't matter but I'm going to grab it and I'm going to use this move tool and I'm going to drag from here onto here and there's my photograph now I can get rid of this one now I can click minus and I've got this one to work with and you'll notice that I've got little corners on each of these photographs if yours doesn't show you need to check that this one here that says show transform controls has been switched on okay and then when you switch it on you can see the handles handles will let you change the size of things so you can make it a bit bigger or a bit smaller if you choose to and so on and every time you do something like that you'll see that there's a tick and a minus up here tick basically means yes do what I've done to it and the tick means no cancel it so I'm going to cancel that change of size and I'm going to leave it as it was okay once I've got my photograph on the screen apart from moving it around and position it in different places I want to be able to do some things to it before I do that I need to understand what I'm actually looking at so if I come back to my layers panel over here now on the right hand side, I'll see now that not only have I got the background, but I've also got this one called layer, which it says layer one. It's got the picture of my photograph in it. And if I move my photo on here, the picture in the layer is in a different position. So this is like a little picture of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click where it says layer one, and I'm going to name this, and I'm going to call this one horse. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that I know which layer I'm working on and layers will become a bit more obvious to you in a moment. I'm going to bring in a second photo so you can see how that one will work. So I'm going to open another one. This time I'm going to pick uh, this one on the sand dunes and click OK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag it down to float it. I'm going to change the image size to make it a bit, um, a bit smaller than it actually is. So I'm going to make this, maybe I'll make this one 800. And then I'm going to use my move tool. I'm going to drag my photo down onto here. Okay, I'm going to get this one out of the way. Now you can see on my layers, I've got another layer. It's called layer one again. This time I'm going to double click that one and I'm going to name this one sled. Okay, now watch what happens if I drag this photograph and cover up this photograph. Okay, I can't see my horse photo now, but according to my layers, it's still there. But what's happened is it's put the horse layer behind the sled layer. Now if I drag my sled layer and put it lower down, watch what happens. It puts it on the top. So basically, what my layers do is they stack my photos in different orders. So I've got one on top of the other and I can have as many different layers as I want to. Okay, the fun comes in now in actually changing and doing things with my photographs. So the first one I'm going to have a look at is I'm going to have a look at the horse's photo. So I'm going to make sure I've clicked on the horse photo, so I'm working on that layer. And I'm even going to turn off the little eye on my sled so it doesn't distract me. So I've just got this one to work with. I can even make this whole page a little bit bigger so I can see it better. So I'm going to move this up to maybe 65%. 
and it gets a lot bigger. I can go even bigger again if I want to, just maybe 80%. Okay, so that's a lot easier for me to see. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take some of the edges off this so I've not got quite so much of the photograph showing. A good way of doing that is to use the eraser tool. So I'm going to click on my eraser tool, and there it is. It looks like a big circle. If I use the square brackets on my keyboard next to my letter P, I can make this one go bigger and smaller by clicking the left arrow or the right arrow. When I'm happy with the size, all I've got to do is hold down my mouse and click. And look what happens. It erases whichever bits I want to get rid of. So I'm going to do the same round here and make quite an interesting shape. Okay, that will do for now. I'm going to leave that one. And now I'm going to go and have a look at my other layer, my sled one. So I'm going to turn the light off, or the little bulb, or the eye off on that one, turn the eye on on that one. And again, I've got to make sure I'm working on the right layer. So I'm going to click on this layer to make my sled layer go blue. Okay, when I'm working in my Photoshop file, I can use something else. I can use this one here called Lasso Tool. Now if yours is not showing, you just hold that down until it, this little sub-menu pops open and you click on Lasso. Once I've got my lasso, I can draw any sort of shape I want. So I want to get rid of this man that's there. So I'm going to come round here, get rid of this other man out of the picture, and then join the two up. And watch what happens. When they join up, I get this weird effect, which is called marching ants. So I've selected this shape. Now what might be useful is to get rid of everything on the outside of this shape. The easiest way to do that is to do what's called inverting. So I'm going to go to my selection, and I'm going to say inverse. So now it's selected everything around this shape. So all I've got to do now is press my delete button and watch what happens. That's right, it deletes all the extra bits. Okay, I still got all these marching ants and I don't want them any, anymore. So I can click on select and click deselect and it puts it all back to normal. Now at the moment I haven't saved, so I'm going to save my work. File, save as, and I'm going to choose Photoshop as the type of file and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this one Mr. Morgan Montage. Oop, I can't even spell my own name. Mr. Morgan Montage and hit save. Okay, you're going to save yours into your network area. Okay, this is where the fun really starts now. So I can turn this one back on again and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see everything in one go. I'm going to go to 50% now. And if I put the light eye back on here and go to my move tool. You can see now that whichever layer I'm on, I can move that object around. So I can have as many layers as I want. I've only got two layers plus my background layer, but you'll probably find that you want to have more layers than that. Now, we can even put color in the background if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that at the moment. We're going to look at what we can do with these different photos. So we can get some really nice effects by overlapping them, um, but something else that might be useful to do to them is to have what's called special effects. So on any one, I'll pick the horse one for now. If I go to where my horse is, to the right of where it says the word horse, in this, this blue space here, I'm just going to double click it. Watch what happens. Okay, I get this special effects box opening up. Now this special effects box can do lots and lots of different things. You can see all these ones down the left hand side. None of them are ticked at the moment. Now, until we actually say OK, we haven't actually done anything to them. So I can click and see what they look like. So you can see that one put a slight shadow around there. If I click and take it off again, you can see the difference. For any of these, when I click them, if I actually select them, I get lots of other things I can change. So for this difference, the size on this one, I can make that bigger. You can see that effect that went on then by changing the size. The spread will do something else to it, make a different effect again. I can even change the colour that it's actually working with. Maybe I go for blue instead. And all the time you can see the preview in the window next to you of what's actually going on. But until I click OK, none of this is going to stay that way. Opacity means going invisible. I've got various shadows that I can put on. Again, I can change what the shadows look like. I've got glows. So outer glows is quite a nice one to use change that to a, a much brighter color maybe a pinky kind of color say okay doesn't look like much is happening at the moment so what I can do is I can increase the size a little bit maybe I'll make the spread a bit different still not doing very much change the noise now it still doesn't look like very much so perhaps I'll change the blend mode I'll just go for normal and there suddenly it all 
looks much nicer. Opacity again is to do with how invisible or transparent it is. Size affects how much of it shows. You can have a very big a lot or a little bit, and so on. Now for all of these things, you can have a play around with them and you can see what effect they have. Textures, contours, bevel. Bevel's quite a nice one. You can put some strange effects on with bevels. Change the size of them. Bevel the edges to make these things look like they're three dimensions. And so on. So there's lots and lots of things here for you to play with. And when you're happy with any of the things you've done to them, all you have to do is click OK. okay. I'm going to take a few of these off so it doesn't look quite so, so strange. And I'm going to click OK. Now at any point later on, if I'm not happy, I can come back and I can edit it again. So even if I'm on my sled layer and I think mm, that horse layer doesn't look quite right, I'm going to go back. I can click back on my horse layer and double click back on the little FX box and open it up again. And I can go back in and I can change. Maybe I don't want it to be pink, maybe I do want it to be blue. And I can change my settings around and click OK again. Make sure I save every now and again, file save, and it's all good. Okay, one other thing I can do is to play with my text tool. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select my text tool. I'm just going to click somewhere into my white area. And you'll notice straight away, before I even type anything, I've got a text layers just popped up. So I'm going to type something in here, put my name in there. And there's my text. Now, this, this letters are all dictated by what's going on at the top. So if I highlight this and I decide that I want to make this font a bit bigger, I can even type numbers in there if I choose to, maybe make it 90 so it's nice and big. I can change the colour, maybe make this a purpley colour. I can even change the font style. If I don't want it to be Calibre, I can pick one of these other ones. So there's lots of ways I can actually play around with it. When I'm happy with my text, I just click the tick to fix it in place. Remembering I've still got a layer, so I can still turn that layer on and off and I can still go to my move tool I can grab my text and I can move it somewhere else on the screen I can even grab the corners and I can make it bigger or smaller skinnier narrow I can do lots of things with it by using that move tool I can also in the same way that I did with my pictures come over and double click and bring up the effects for it let me just tick the tick up there first get the effects box up here and I can do some things to this as well. So I can put shadow on my font. I can put glows on my font to see what that's going to look like. Put an outer glow on it. Maybe make this a yellow colour. And I can change this to normal mode. You're beginning to see it. If I make it, there we go, make it a bit bigger. So I've got lots of options of things that I can do to make this look really interesting. All I've got to do is make sure that I save regularly as I go along keep saving and right at the end when I've, I'm happy that everything's the way it should be and I haven't got any empty spaces like I've got in my drawer and it's all super duper and full of lots of pictures I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to save as and this time I'm going to make a second version of it and I'm going to make um, a JPEG version and the JPEG version will just end up as being a picture so I can click on that one and like these are pictures I can give it a name Mr Morgan Montage will do hit save Say OK. Now I've got my photo montage. It's got its own picture. There it is. And this is the original Photoshop document. So I can always go back and edit this one at any point and change things on my final piece if I want to. OK, good luck.